Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today I will explain CI CD in Flutter and for that I want to compare two important tools for that. One is GitHub Actions and the other one is Code Magic. And before I talk now too much, let's get right into it. First, I want to begin with what is a CI CD pipeline. CI stands for continuous integration and CD for continuous delivery. Both of them are just two puzzles that are working together mostly. And I want to explain you by that little example how usually a CI CD pipeline comes into process. So usually we start with code, right? We develop our application. Then we commit these changes onto our GitHub repository, for example. And now we can set up our webhooks CI CD pipeline in that way that it takes the branch that we like. And as soon as we have that branch, we generate out of that the next steps. So for example, we build our application and see if there are build errors. The next step would be to run our tests to see if the tests are running fine and everything is smoothly in our application. The next step would be to release the app to something. So for example, we can release our app to Google Play Store and then to operate the app. Sometimes continuous delivery and continuous deployment works really close together. So operate is also a part of that. And last but not least, to monitor the app. And where do we find now CI? CI, also continuous integration, we will find in build and test. So it surrounds that part. And then CD is usually mentioned for releases, operations and monitoring. So what is the benefit of that? Because we don't have to build everything anymore on our machine, we have clean uh, instances of a machine that tries to get all the dependency that it's need to create this application. So we take all, away all the side effects that could happen on a dirty environment like our system usually is. So we don't have specific tools installed. We don't have additional dependencies installed. And that helps us a lot to test our application, to make it stable and also to get fast feedback if something is wrong. GitHub Actions. What is GitHub Actions? Well, GitHub Actions is one option that we have for such a CI CD platform. And this has and offers the best possible integration in GitHub. And we will see that later when I will make a demonstration how we can set up a CI CD in GitHub Actions. Then for open source projects, we have an un unlimited number of builds, but for private repositories, we have 2000 minutes at the moment. The benefit here is that we have community-based actions. So that means for every programming language that exists, there is a community member who created an action that creates you uh, the build at the end. So for C Sharp, it is very good for uh, Java. And of course, there are also some packages for Flutter that I want to show you later. And of course, you can also create your own packages or you can help in the open source community to un uh, help them to create better actions. And the parallelism network works with the metrics builds. What this means is a bit more complex, but in general, we can say if you have multiple platforms, you can just run them in parallel and also different tasks can run in parallel. Additionally, I have to say the uh, documentation so far is amazing. So if you want to check it out, do it. The next point is code magic. And why is code magic so, so important for Flutter development? Because it is very easy. It is so much aligned to Flutter that is amazing. It has still a good GitHub integration. So it is still possible to create, for example, releases in GitHub. It provides you with 500 build minutes per month for free. So for everyone and every additional buyout is $19. The pricing model is perfectly under your control and you don't have any additional fees here. Additionally, it is UI based most of the time. At the moment, there is a beta phase for YAML files. So you have also the opportunity to bring the build pipeline into your code, which a lot of developers prefer. And we have the SSH and VC VNC access to build machines. And this is very unique for code magic. That means if something is going wrong and we need a stack trace for that and the logs maybe don't help us with it, we have the possibility to access the build machine of code magic for 20 20 minutes with SSH and VNC to check what is the error message exactly, is something completely fuzzy there or is even the environment dirty or have something problems with the environment. So that helps us a lot with debugging. And the last thing is the documentation is amazing. So now I explained the two tools that, that I usually use for my CI CD. I want to show you also how you can integrate that into your project. So before I talk too much, let's see how it's done. So let's begin by going into actions in your GitHub repository project. Here you can see that we have different GitHub actions in the market store. 
These all creates you a workflow that I will create here for Dart. Now that we have that created, we can see we it's generated as a file called dart.yaml inside of our GitHub repository. And on the right side, you see the marketplace for different packages that we can use to import, improve our CI CD pipeline. In the next step, we go into Flutter Actions, which is an action for our pipeline. And here we can see, for example, the usages and all the documentation that that open source community gave us in that place. Also, we have a very big green button on the top right, use latest version, which provides us the information how we can implement that into our own pipeline. I copy that here and bring that into our own project. Back in our, to our own YAML file, I paste the usage example and now I make the indentation correctly. Because in a YAML file, there are always a very specific indentation that has to be set. Because the version is slightly outdated here, I increase the version to the, to the highest current available version. Before we now commit our actions workflow, we can take a look on the right side where the documentation lives. And here we have the documentation how we can set up our own workflow and now we commit the changes. I commit it now here directly inside of GitHub, but of course you can do that in every uh, code editor of your choice. After that, we can see in GitHub Actions our dashboard for all the workflows that exist. But as you can see, we created under .github workflows .yaml our YAML file, and that will trigger our build whenever we push something onto the branch master. So after we pushed a new version to our master system, I speed that here up, we come into an error. And that is one of the benefits of GitHub, of course, that if the GitHub community has a problem, we can find everything in an issue somewhere else. So after a quick research, I found the error here, which I liked, of course, and implemented that one into our code. What that means is we have to remove from our YAML file the two lines of code where we have the container from Google Dart latest. This shows us very good um, that it has a benefit to have an open source community because everything is there for free. But sometimes the quality lags because here the error message was not really helpful. And now with that slight modification, we finally got our successful build where all the gets and everything worked well. But one of my tests is failing. But thanks to the live logs, the debugging of this error is very easy to find. We get the run flutter test error and here we find directly and immediately our stack trace what happened wrong. One additional thing that I wanted to show you is how to create a status batch out of that. You see here on the right the create status batch which directly shows us how the CI of this um, process worked and we can copy that markdown language into our readme file to give our customers better overview. So with that slight modification, we managed now to bring our build to success. And that's it for GitHub Actions. And as you can see, I concentrated myself most of the time here in the CI uh, platform, and I will do the same thing for CodeMagic. And why I don't do a CD part here is that the plugins for Flutter in GitHub Actions are currently still a bit weak. So there needs to be have improvement. So if you feel ready, Please join the open source community and help them out. So now tr let's try to compare that with CodeMagic. Here you create an account on codemagic.io and then you go inside of the dashboard and you can see here your builds, your teams, and um, I want to start with the user settings and different integrations. So one of them is, for example, GitHub. GitHub is connected at the moment, so I can see all the repositories from here. But it is also possible to have repositories that are not GitHub or Bitbucket, right? This is just the integrations. Additionally important is, for example, the Apple Developer Portal, which allows you to assign iOS code immediately. Inside of our applications, we can add apps from custom source code that we see on the right top. You enter your repository URL and it automatically starts to create you a build pipeline that you need. Also, you can see that um, I have different accounts here that I can show or hide different repositories. After a quick search, I was able to find my GitHub repository for the safe recipes. And now I want to configure my first, very first build. The first thing that we normally do is to configure our build triggers. So if we add our master branch here and press trigger and push, whenever we push something on that branch, it will automatically trigger our build pipeline. And so the integration between GitHub and CodeMagic is already done. 
The next thing are environment variables that we can access with the dollar sign. And this could be your database settings or something like that. Then there is a possibility of data uh, dependency caching. You will find more to that in the documentation of CodeMagic. It is a very useful tool whenever you have built ones that you save the dependencies and can use them later again to, uh, to reduce your build time even further. The next part is this plus icon that you can see in between of the different steps. It allows you to add post and pre-scripts, so things that will be added after and before that. Additionally, if we go to tests now, we can see here, select which tests you want to run. We want to run Flutter Analyzer in our case and Flutter Tests. And if the test is failing, we want to stop the build immediately. Now we can say where we want to run the tests on. We want to run them on an iOS simulator an Android emulator, or even on an AWS device farm. The next step would be the build option. In the build option, we can select our Flutter version, the Xcode version, and CocoaPod version. Additionally, we can choose which platforms we want to build on, Android, iOS, Web, Mac, or Linux. And then we can choose if we want to create our Android app bundle as an artifact in the end. We can select the mode in which we want to release. And the last part is the publishing tab. In the publishing tab, we can set up everything that we want to do for the publishing part. Under email, we can set up a send of emails with the artifacts that the build is creating to different recipients. On Slack, we can send it to a Slack channel that we can select and publishing. I currently don't have a channel selected. And of course, we can also send it to CodeMagic static pages, but for that, we need to set up the web project. Last but not least, we have of course Google Play releases, but we need to set up the code sign-in and App Store. If we Connect. go now back to the very top, we find here the Start Build button. Here we can select the branch, we select the workflow, we can enable us the remote access with SSH and VNC. So now we first time execute our build and as you see on the left side, we do that with a MacBook mini. You can see here the tests running, the build Android, all what we setting in the before in the build pipeline. One very good feature that I want to highlight here a bit is the testing tab. You have here the part result and log. And if you watch exactly in the results, you can see all your tests run. So now we know exactly how we can use GitHub Actions and uh, CodeMagic work. But in the last slide, I just want to make a short um, comparison once more. So is it Flutter ready? Yes, GitHub Actions is Flutter ready, but the CI support is very good. But the deployment action is currently missing or in a version that I wouldn't use in production version 0.1. I think I've seen some packages. In CodeMagic, you see a strong alignment to Flutter and it is absolutely code ready and production ready. Debugging in GitHub Actions, it runs with live logging and in CodeMagic with live logging and the access of SSH and VNC. Free build time, well, in um, GitHub Actions, as I mentioned, the build time is for free for open source projects and 2,000 free minutes per month for every private repository. And then you have on the CodeMagic side, 500 free build minutes per month. The pricing, well, is combined in GitHub plans. That means in GitHub Actions, you are part of the GitHub community. So you pay the pro, pro plan and become 3,000 free minutes. If you be an enterprise, you become 10,000 minutes and so on. So I added you the link here and I will put it down in the video description so that you find all the necessary infos for the pricing. For CodeMagic, that is very simple. $19, 500 build minutes, easy. Um, side notes that are maybe important. GitHub Actions is a community-based action, so um, you have all the benefits of the community, so you have a lot of people there that have very smart ideas, but you have on the other side the problem that sometimes it is not production ready, or if you don't find something that you want to use, you have to create it yourself. The parallelism is built with uh, metrics builds, which is amazing, and choosable host runners. So you have like Linux, you can choose between Windows, you can choose which uh, host runner you want to have. In CodeMagic, that is usually a MacBook Mini or MacBook Pro. You can choose that. You have free build runs for MacBook Pro a month, which is amazing. You have the beautiful visualization, which helps you a lot to create your build pipeline. And of course, you can also download it to have the build pipeline as code. So you should really check that out. And now it's time for you guys. I want really to know which CI CD pipeline you use. What are you interested in? Maybe you also use just Travis CI or another build pipeline that I'm not even aware of. So please let me know down in the comments below. On the top of me, you'll find two videos that you are maybe interested in. On the right side, you'll find the subscribe button. It would be awesome if you click it. Like that video, share that video. Thank you for joining me as always. 
and see you the next time. Have a great week.